Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome in to The Wake. If this is your first time joining us, my name is Jordan. I am the host of your show, and this is a cruise news talk show, but it's so much more than cruise news. We go over a lot of fun topics, um, and I hope that you are enjoying this lovely Wednesday morning. I have my cup of coffee here. It says, is it brunch yet? <laughs> I'm going to start the morning by taking a sip. I, I cheers everyone that's watching at home um, along with me, whether you're at home or at work or at school. Hopefully, if you're in school, you're not watching this. You're, you're paying attention to, uh, to whatever's going on in the classroom. But cheers to you. And thank you so much for joining us. We have a lot to talk about. As every week right now, it seems that more and more breaking news in terms of the cruise lines and the ports and the ships, I mean, it's like everything keeps changing pretty constantly. So we've got quite a bit to dive into. I do just want to jump in and address a couple of quick um, questions that I've seen come in here before the show started, asking about Jared and his health. At this point, Jared is pretty much fully recovered. Um, somehow, I did not get it. And I guess that, that we did a good job isolating ourselves and staying apart. Um, our house must have really thick walls where particles do not float through. <laughs> um, but I'm really thankful that that I stayed healthy the whole time and that Jared is obviously back to his normal self again. Um, we're back, you know, fully around each other in each other's space, getting on each other's nerves, you know, all of the wonderful things that uh, you and your spouse get to enjoy together. So he's doing good. Thank you so much for um, caring about him and asking about him and, and about both of us. Um, we're very, very thankful to have our health. And I hope we will be able to get back out on a ship very soon. We've obviously had to cancel three cruises this month. And we've got quite a few cruises in queue. A lot of people keep asking when our next cruise is. Here's the thing. We're going to make sure that Jared tests negative before we announce our next cruise. Just because we want to make sure that we're not going to have any issues or glitches with our travel um, so he is going to be testing again. I think he's going to take a PCR test towards the end of this week. And we're going to make sure, and I, I will as well. I'll test again too. Um, and just to make sure we're both negative and all set. And then once we are negative and we know that we can board our next ship, we will make a big announcement. Um, hopefully maybe by this time next week, we'll be able to talk about where we're going next and where you're going to see us. I know somebody posted in our community page last night that they miss seeing our lives on ships. We miss doing our lives on ships so much. Um, so we can't wait to get back on a ship and be doing lives from hot tubs again. It's time. It's been way too long since we've done a hot tub live. I think it's been since we've been on Celebrity Constellation. This is also the longest that it's been for us since we've been on land since last May. Um, if you've been, tra if you've been, I, I, I was about to say, if you've been traveling with us, I think that's fair. If you've been traveling with us, you'll know that starting in June, we were pretty much consistently on cruise ships all the way up until mid December. So this has definitely slowed down for us. Um, we're getting a lot done in our house, which is, is really good. We're creating a packing room, which we might have to make an actual YouTube video about because we're trying to do things to get ourselves super organized. We're trying to like, just, you know, right now when we pack, things kind of go everywhere and the room just kind of becomes really messy. We're trying to avoid that. We're trying to be really organized here in 2022. Okay, let's jump into our hot topics. That was enough of an intro for me. Uh, but thank you again for everyone that has joined us. I want to start by talking about a woman on TikTok that has gone viral sharing the story of another woman in Jamaica. Now, this is, take this story for what it may be. Um, this is kind of a cautionary tale if you're going to travel to a land-based resort and somewhat, in my opinion, a case for cruising right now. Um, there is a family that went on a vacation in Jamaica and ended up testing positive when they're, while they were down there. Now, this particular resort in Jamaica does not let you leave until you're in the clear. And this one woman has been there now for two weeks and she's been symptomatic and she's run out of her medicine. And she's been unable to get any medication to her resort. 
So as a result, she's been having some serious medical issues. Um, this is just, a, again, a cautionary tale. If you're going to travel right now, you need to make sure that you have ample amounts of the things that you need, I would say, for 30 days, just in case you end up getting stranded somewhere. Now, the difference between a land-based resort and an actual cruise ship, a cruise ship, the cruise comes to an end, right? You're on the ship. The cruise ends. They take everybody off the boat. And then you either go quarantine somewhere at a hotel or you go home. So this kind of, to me, makes kind of a, a good case for cruising, especially if you're someone that has a high risk of being gone from home for a long period of time, um, because these people in Jamaica are stuck. They're stranded without their medication and without a lot of their medical needs. And I would, I just think that that must be so stressful. You already are in a different place. You already have COVID. You're not at your own home. You don't have your, your normal comforts that you're used to having. And now you don't have your medication and you can't get it. That is like a nightmare scenario. And I know if I was in that, if I was in that situation, I would be extremely upset as would I'm sure anyone else. So if you're traveling, this is just a hot tip. Make sure you have what you need for 30 days. And maybe consider not going to a land-based resort and taking a cruise. Just my two cents. Um, we also put a survey out this week that said, if your port got canceled while you were, you were on a cruise, what would you expect? Now, this is a very, very interesting topic, especially because we've seen the news that we've been breaking about, you know, San Francisco, Puerto Vallarta. There's other um, ports of call that have dramatically changed their their guidelines for COVID, their COVID guidelines, um, now requiring things such as tests or, you know, your vaccine card. And cruise ships are bypassing some ports. There's quite a few ports getting canceled right now. I keep saying if you're taking a cruise to specifically visit the ports, you might want to reconsider or change your mindset because so many ports are being skipped. So we put this top, we put this survey out here that just said if your port was canceled, what would you expect as a resolution? I'm going to get the updated numbers because I wrote the numbers down last night and they already changed overnight. 21% of you said I would expect a replacement port. 27% said I would expect onboard credit. 15% said I would expect a partial refund of the cruise fare. 8% said I would expect an additional onboard activity or show on the missed port day. And 29% of you said nothing. That's part of the cruise. Well, I thought that this was important to talk about because if you read your cruise contract, which that's the, the long contract that you sign before paying for your cruise, if you miss out on a port, the cruise owes you nothing except for whatever port fees that you paid to get into that port. So let's say each person in your party paid $15 to go to San Juan. That was like the port charge for San Juan. The cruise line owes you, and there's three people in your party, the cruise line owes you a refund of $45, and that's it. They don't owe you any additional onboard credit. They don't owe you any additional entertainment. They certainly don't owe you another port. Um, and they clearly state that in your cruise contract. Now, I'm, I want to talk about this, and this is a little bit controversial. I realize that if you don't know this, I come from a customer service background. Um, before I left my job to do YouTube and social media full time, I actually was the director for a customer center, customer service center um, and multiple call centers, both here in the United States and overseas. So I know customer service pretty well. And I can tell you, when you pay for something and you expect it, and it's less than what you expected, our gut instinct as humans is to expect something else and to be given something to make the situation right. Even if we were told, hey, if this changes, we don't owe you anything. I just use this as an example because the cruise lines have done a pretty good job of giving people extra things, especially during this time of COVID. And I just want to remind you that when you are confronted or talking to a customer service professional, please be nice. I have seen countless number of customer service employees be abused and traumatized from people being so upset over something that that company doesn't owe them anything. So I just am putting this out into the universe. If you're working with anyone at any of the cruise lines in terms of customer service professionals, anyone behind that guest service desk, be kind, have grace, 
and just be nice to those people because it's not their fault. And ultimately, you signed a contract saying you understood if a cruise port was missed, you were entitled to those port fees and that's it. You were not entitled to anything else. And it's just something to, that I think is really good to kind of get in your mind and understand and remember, especially as you're cruising. Don't set yourself up for this failure if you skip a port and then the cruise line doesn't give you something else in exchange. Okay, that was a little bit of a soapbox. <laughs> I understand that. Um, I just, I, I get really heated when I see these people online, especially Facebook and the cruise critic boards that are just going off because they are so upset at something that the cruise line had absolutely no control over. And at the end of the day, you signed a contract saying, okay, if this is, if this port is missed, I understand. I'll take my port fee and I won't say anything, right? That is, that is, <sighs> It, it just it gets me going when I see these these posts of people that are just going off and getting so angry at the cruise lines for something that if they would have read their contract, they would know was not something that they were entitled to. All right, I'm going to take a sip of coffee before we get on to the news. We call this uh, this next segment, Hey Captain, What's Happening? And this is the latest in cruise news. There's been so much happening this week. The biggest thing that you probably saw happen was that the CDC's conditional sailing order has officially expired and not been renewed. I think that this is a great thing for the cruise lines. Um, I'm going to kind of share my thoughts and opinions on, on what's to come when it comes to this. However... If you've been following, you know, the, the conditional sailing order is that extremely lengthy document that the CDC put out at the start of the at, of the pandemic saying, here are the things that we are expecting the cruise lines to fall in line with, and they have to do. I mean, things like vaccine mandates, masks mandates, keeping people safe, um, you know, what would happen if there's an outbreak, how to handle that, what resources and funds the cruise lines have to have available in case there is an outbreak or they have to quarantine people land uh, you know, on land from the ship. This has now expired and this has gone away. The CDC said that they were not going to, um, you know, renew this document, but what they are going to do is they're going to create a voluntary program that the cruise lines can opt into. And in exchange, the CDC will give them support, guidance, and guidelines that they believe they should be working with. Um, also, that whole color coding system that we see, we've, we've heard a lot of people talk about that. Um, Tony from La Lita Loca did a great job of breaking down that color coding system and explaining exactly how that is. It basically rates the ships, ship by ship, um, in different colors, saying, you know, here's where the outbreak levels are and here's where the CDC investigation is happening. That is going away. Um, and now that the, well, that is going away for for anyone unless they choose to opt into it. So this voluntary program, here's how this is going to work. The cruise lines are going to opt into the voluntary program. And if they opt in, that color-coded program is going to stay stay as it is. Um, they're still going to be um, coloring ships yellow, orange, green, or red, depending on how many COVID cases are on board. If a cruise line chooses to opt out of that, they're then going to gray that ship out. And on the CDC website, that just means that that cruise line is not a part of the CDC's program. Now, here's what I want to put out there. And if you are in the comments, I would love for you to leave a comment, um, you know, either in the live chat or below. Um, if you leave the comment below the video, that actually helps this video quite a bit. I want to know what your thoughts are on this whole new program. Should the cruise lines opt into the CDC program or not? Here is my take on it. The CDC has already been highly involved with the health and safety measures aboard cruise ships forever. Um, you hear of different viruses that break out on cruise ships. The CDC shows up and they're there. Um, you know, if there is another type of virus like a flu or a stomach bug, a norovirus that breaks out on a cruise ship, the CDC is already involved. So the CDC's involvement on outbreaks and illness on cruise ships and the cruise lines, that has been around forever. I think it just really came to the surface here in the last two years because people started to realize that the CDC had quite a hold on the cruise lines and they really started to um, make a lot of mandates and things that the cruise lines had to do. So 
do you want to see the cruise lines opt into this voluntary program? Or do you think the cruise lines should do their own thing and not be you know, tied to the CDC any more than they already have to be? I can tell you that Norwegian Cruise Line has already opted into the volunteer program. That is one of the only cruise lines that we currently know of that is going to be a part of that program. The other cruise lines have yet to opt in. Um, and we're waiting by to see what's going to happen. Now, I could see Royal Caribbean Group opting into this. And I say that because Royal Caribbean and Norwegian Cruise Line both hired, they came together to hire the same health and safety officer for both for all of their ships. And that health and safety officer was guiding the cruise lines to make um, decisions. And they made a lot of similar decisions. Norwegian was just way slower in terms of restarting their ships. So it wouldn't surprise me if um, if Royal Caribbean opted into this. It honestly wouldn't surprise me if a lot of the cruise lines opted into this because my thought is that the cruise lines will probably get more support from the CDC and the government if they are opted into this voluntary program than if they don't opt in. At the end of the day, I do think, you know, regardless of what we think of the CDC, and I think that the CDC has made this – ridiculous example out of the cruise line that is completely unfair to other um, other vacation types and other modes of transportation and travel. I think they have called the cruise line out in the wrong way. At the end of the day, though, the CDC is trying to keep people safe and is trying to put guidelines in place for the cruise lines to make sure that they are doing the right things to help keep their crew and their guests at sea safe. And I know that that is what we really all do care about is the safety of others um, and wanting to see people stay safe. I want to hear from you. Drop your comments below and let us know what you think of this new guidance. I'm very interested. Let's also talk about Omicron. So we do have some good news going on with Omicron. Parts of the East Coast, we believe scientists and doctors are saying the peak has already happened. Um, now, I do want to share this interesting article. I may have touched on it last week. But there is a couple of different articles that we saw where they're being able to tell where the peaks are happening in the wastewater. So wastewater, stuff that flushes down our toilet and goes down goes down sinks, goes down our bathrooms, that wastewater, um, they're testing that as it comes into the city, especially places that have city water, right? So your wastewater all goes to the same place. They're testing that water for levels of COVID all around the country. And they could already tell about a week before Boston's peak happened that the peak had occurred based on their samples of the wastewater. I think that this is fascinating. Um, we're starting to see this more and more throughout the country that the peaks are happening and COVID numbers are starting to come down. Of course, I only think that this means good things for the cruise lines. Um, they had said that they originally they had hoped that the peak would happen in January, February. I'm really hopeful that we're seeing this peak happen in a lot of places um, you know, here a little bit earlier than what was predicted. And I do think at the end of the day, this is going to mean that cruising is going to be able to get back to more normal. We're going to be able to see less breakouts on ships. And I think people will feel safer in general cruising. So good news on that front. Of course, the pandemic is this ever evolving and changing beast, and we don't know what's going to happen from month to month. So, of course, a new variant could come out, you know, here within the next few days, and then that could shake things up. But we definitely hope and pray that things are getting better, people are not getting as sick, and that we can get back out on the seas safely, and that people can feel really good at cruising again. We talked about the CDC, or I'm so sorry, not the CDC. We talked about the Cruise Critics Survey that was put out this last week, um, where people were asked, based on the CDC's recommendation that no one cruise right now, do you feel comfortable cruising? And a high number of those people said, no, we do not. Um, so you can check that video out. But it was so fascinating to me because online, all I see everywhere is people ripping the CDC to shreds. <laughs> on Facebook, I see people hating on the CDC, saying they've done the cruise industry wrong, you know, and we do not appreciate anything that they're doing. However, according to this survey, at least a pretty high number of you actually really respect what the CDC is saying and say, yeah, based on their particular uh, uh, recommendation that no one cruises right now, I actually don't really want to cruise. I don't feel safe doing it. I don't feel comfortable doing it. Now, the large amount of those people said that they did not want to do that because of quarantine and they didn't want to be stuck and quarantined in their cabin. 
large amount of people also said it was because they didn't want to get COVID. Completely understandable. Nobody wants to be stuck in a cruise cabin at sea, especially apart from your family. Um, that would be miserable. I completely like affirm that thought and that idea. I also think that that would stink, especially if you don't get to vacation very much. You can go back and check that video out, but I did find that interesting just because I felt like I, I see this narrative online about the CDC. And it makes me think that there's a lot of keyboard warriors at home that are really loud and really vocal about the CDC. And then there's a lot of people that may not be as vocal on the internet and on Facebook and, you know, actually be listening to the CDC and taking their guidance in terms of cruising. Okay. I have some more news here. Labadee. Labadee is Royal Caribbean's private island. They have started to hire their land-based crew back for Labadee, which means we could see Labadee reopen very, very soon. Of course, Labadee is a small part of the, the excuse me, a small part of Haiti um, right on the coast there. And they had closed down due to civil unrest in the country, um, stating that it was not safe to currently travel to Haiti. Um, we've seen Haiti a lot in the news. What is happening there in the country is absolutely heartbreaking. Um, and Royal Caribbean had pulled back and hadn't actually gone there at all. They had not sh sent any ships there um, for the last several months due to this civil unrest. Um, this is this I know was a really big bummer for a lot of people because people do enjoy Labadee. But there's good news. It is coming back. Uh, we believe, we think that the fact that Royal Caribbean has started to hire land-based crew there for Labadee means we could receive the return of Labadee here in the next few months. We've got some really breaking news coming out of Colombia this morning. If you have a cruise going to Colombia, like Cartagena, um, you want to listen up to this because they just changed and updated their guidelines for cruise ships coming into port. However, this is not nearly as dramatic as we've seen some other ports um, with their updates, like Puerto Vallarta. So Colombia is now requiring that everyone 18 and over get vaccinated um, and have your vaccine card when you step foot on land. And everyone on the ship has a negative COVID test within 72 hours of boarding the cruise ship. Now, this should not be a big deal because already for most cruise lines, you have to have that negative test in order to board your cruise. Who is this going to impact? This is going to impact anyone that has a medical exemption. So we know that there are certain people that have medical exemptions that cannot get the vaccine due to medical reasons, whether that be an allergy um, or there is something else in the vaccine that they cannot put in their body for that small amount of people. So I'm really talking to, to, to a small amount of people here. If that is you, if you fall into that category and you are going to Columbia in the coming months know that you would not probably be able to get off the ship uh, because you do have to have a vaccine card as well as that negative test. Everyone should have a negative test, but if you do have a medical exemption, you're not going to have that vaccine card. Um, now, this has also been happening all over the place. There are two other islands that have updated their guidelines, very similar to Puerto Vallarta, the island of Bermuda, and the island of Puerto Rico. Um, if you're going to either of those islands by cruise ship, they are also now requiring negative tests, but within a certain amount of time of getting to the port, not boarding your cruise ship. Um, so we're probably going to see a lot of ships coming up that are going to miss the ports of Puerto Rico. I know that there's a lot of um, cruises that will be going to Bermuda coming this spring. Um, I think Bermuda's Bermuda season, I think, should have ended, and there shouldn't be too many cruise ships going there right now because the cruise ships really do start to ramp up in the spring. So maybe for Bermuda, it will be fine, and we'll see this guidance change by the time ships are going back to Bermuda. Um, but if you are going to Puerto Rico or San Juan, just know those guidelines before you go. Again, remember, if your port gets canceled, you're not entitled to anything except for the port fee that you were charged to go to that port. Um this is happening all over the place. We're obviously seeing this happening in more and more islands. However, I know I know with the Omicron news that we just shared, fingers crossed, this isn't going to be much longer, and we're going to see some of these guidance maybe pull back um, and ports start to welcome guests again, which is exciting. Okay, I'm going to take another sip of coffee. Wow, we are already 25 minutes into the show. I know that I talk a lot and I talk, I mean, it's just me. So you just have me talking to myself here. <laughs> and I'm sorry, if you don't like the sound of my voice, you might want to find another channel. Um, but we are here with the money saving tip of the week. Now, this money saving tip 
I think is a great tip. I have to give a shout out to my mom because my mom actually is the one that tipped us off to this uh, this money saving tip that we didn't actually know about. And I do want to preface this with JJ Cruz has not done this yet. Um, so look a little bit more into it. This also does not necessarily apply to cruise lines, but it does apply to hotels and car rentals, which often you find yourself doing one or both when you take a vacation. Um, if you fly in the night before to your cruise, you're going to stay in a hotel. So this could apply and save you money to that portion of your trip. We are talking about AARP. And yes, when I say that, what's the first thing that comes to mind? The first thing that comes to mind is, oh, that is that discount club for people over 50. But here is what you don't know. There is no age minimum to join AARP and take advantage of their savings benefits. There's no age minimum. People think it's it's 50 or up or it's 55 and up. No. For as low as $12 a month, or I'm so sorry, $12 per year. I keep saying per month, but it's per year. $12 per year, you can join AARP, get your AARP card, and take advantage of travel discounts. Like I said, there's certain hotels that take AARP, car rental services, restaurants, dining venues. Um, the cruise lines skirt around this by asking for your specific date of birth. And most cruise lines only give a discount to those 55 and older. So that's how the cruise lines get around this. They don't take an AARP card. But again, hotels, car rentals, restaurants, um, other forms of entertainment, you can use this for and you can save money. So check out AARP. Go take a look in terms of what hotel brands they're working with and um, you know where you could get a discount. If it's a hotel brand that you are staying at pretty frequently... $12 a month is nothing, or $12 a year, I'm so sorry. $12 per year is a very low cost to save money when you're staying at hotels pre and post your cruise vacation. So that's your tip of the week. Thank you, mom, for that. Shout out to her. Okay, I have got some, um, some fun tips here, and I do just want to preface this. Here's where these tips came from. Jared and I obviously spent 100 nights at sea in 2021. We got this question constantly. We got this question via email. People would slide into our DMs and ask us this question. And the question would come up on our lives constantly. And people would say, how do you maintain your weight? Or how do you stay healthy? Or how do you not gain a 1,000 pounds when you're going on cruise to cruise to cruise? Now, let me just, let me just preface this. We started doing most of these things about halfway through, maybe even a little bit more than halfway through our cruise. So we did, you know, I for me, I did definitely gain weight on cruise ships in 2021. That's no secret. Um, but we implemented some of these things to try and maintain our health and stay healthy on cruise ships about halfway through our travels. And they really did help. Um, we haven't mastered each of these tips, but the tips for the week are tips for not gaining those extra pounds on your cruise ship vacation. And listen, if you only cruise once per year, don't listen to this because you deserve a vacation where you go and you indulge and you eat your dessert every single night. You don't need to listen to this. But if you're someone that cruises all the time like we do, you need to take some things and implement them into your life to just stay healthy. Um, and here's our tips. And again, we've not mastered all of these, but we started to implement some of these. Um, and they and they've they've done they've done us good. They've done us good. Um, number one, tell the wait staff as soon as you sit down in the main dining room or your restaurant that you do not want a bread basket. Um, now, this is something that we did not do for a long time, but we started to do, and we now we now are taking this, I think, into 2022. Um, it would be just Jared and I at the table, and we'd get a bread basket with probably let's say six or seven rolls there would be no stopping us eating that entire bread basket before we got our appetizer. Um, you know, then we would get our appetizer, then we would get our main course, then we would get dessert, of course, every single meal. Um, so we eventually just started telling people, don't bring us bread. And people, <laughs> the waiters would get so confused. They'd be like, you don't want bread, why not? So we would just tell them we cruise a lot, we cruise often, we eat plenty of carbs from day to day. Um, the bread is not anything that 
you know, necessarily taste delicious to us and adds a lot in value to our overall health. So we're going to skip the bread and go, we're going to go straight to the appetizer tonight. So number one, tell the wait staff, no bread. Number two, resist the urge for high calorie sugary drinks. Um, you all know that we love a margarita, especially an avocado margarita. Marg on <laughs> from the Royal Caribbean Sabor Bar. Um, however, we try we would try to limit those, especially towards the end of the year. Um, if you're someone that likes high calorie sugary drinks, you know I would recommend that you find something different that might have a lot of natural just juices in it that might not be something with a lot of artificial sugar. Um, you know, a uh, vodka soda with a splash of lime can do wonders and tastes delicious and is only about 60 to 80 calories per drink. Um, again, if you're cruising only once per year, don't listen to these. Go have that margarita. Go enjoy that Cosmopolitan. I'm, I am I want you to enjoy your cruise vacation and not worry about this. Number three, take the stairs instead of the elevator. Um, this is something we started to do on some of the smaller ships, but we've not mastered on the Oasis class yet because those ships are so big. And I just don't know if my <laughs> if my body can take it yet, going from deck three to deck 17 all at once. But we'll get there. We will get there. Number four, avoid any food post-dinner. Um, a lot of the cruise lines will have pizza open until 3 a.m. Or, you know, Celebrity Cruise Line has a pasta bar open until 2 a.m. Don't even get me started on that pasta bar. It is... The bane of my existence. I love it so much. But if you're trying to maintain your health and not gain a few extra pounds on your cruise vacation, avoid the pasta bar at 2 a.m. Don't eat past dinner. And last but not least, share the dessert with someone that you love. Um, you can also skip dessert, but if you do, if you are someone that wants a sweet tooth or wants, you know, to end with a sweet node on your tongue at the end of your at the end of your wonderful dinner, share it with your spouse, share it with your friend. Don't feel like you have to eat everything. Also, here's a little bit of a tip in terms of eating everything. A lot of people didn't don't know this, but if you do not finish your food on a cruise ship, that food does not go to waste. That food goes in a grinder, and then that food goes out into the ocean, and it feeds the fish. So the food is being recycled. And it feeds fish, it feeds dolphins, it feeds it feeds whales. Uh, so don't feel bad if you don't finish your meal. Know that it's going to go in your fishy friend's belly. Okay, it is time for the crew of the week. The crew of the week comes here from our good friend, Jane. Good friend of the channel. And Jane has nominated... Um, Jalister from Anthem of the Seas, and this was her room steward. I just want to read a couple of things that made this crew member stand out. Um, Jane says, I didn't see him initially, but when I got there, I left a note and he took care of everything. He said that he appreciated the note. Every time I would ask him if I every time I asked, he asked me if I needed anything, he would say, I just need you to come back safe. I accidentally left my sleeping off the adventure sign on my door when I left for an excursion. Later that night, he called my cabin to check on me because he knew that I was traveling solo and he just wanted to make sure that I was safe. A passenger down the hall left a note for me outside their cabin. He made sure I knew about it. And every time he saw me walking towards my door, he would rush ahead of me and open my cabin door for me. He made amazing towel animals on Christmas Eve, made a towel angel that he learned how to make from YouTube. Jalister, thank you so much for everything that you did for Jane to make her cruise vacation so special. Um, cruise cabin stewards are some of the most amazing people on ships. I already know that when I, you know, I, Jerry and I try to keep a really tidy cabin, but you know, you still at the end of the day, sometimes have your clothes out, sometimes have your stuff all over the place. Cruise cabin stewards are some of the most amazing people on cruise ships in terms of taking care of your stuff, cleaning up after you, and they just do an amazing job. So, Jalister, thank you so much for all of your work and for what you do. You are this week's Crew of the Week. If you have a Crew of the Week that you would like to see be mentioned on The Wake Show, please email me in the link below um, or the email address below, thewaketalkshow at gmail.com. Um, I would love to hear from you, and we love to hear these stories about what makes the crew so special and what made a particular crew member change your vacation for the better. So feel free to drop those in my inbox. All right. We are now here at the port of the show called Roll Call. I love this is one of my favorite parts of the show because we have people send in 
things that may be funny or insightful from their roll call pages. Um, we've ob obviously shared some pretty funny stories from roll calls of the past, and I have a couple to share with you this week. Um, the first one uh, comes in again from our friend Jane. Um, Jane is a good friend of the, sh the channel. Shout out to Jane. Uh, Jane sends in Jane sends me things every single week for the show, and I just appreciate it so much. Be like Jane. Send me stuff for the show because we love to hear from you. All right. So I, I thought that this was a really good one to share. This is not funny. This is just a little bit more insightful, and I also think this is a really good reminder. Um, this comes from an Allure of the Seas roll call page. If you don't know what a roll call page is, it's a group on Facebook or Cruise Critic where you can join for your particular sailing, get to know people from that sailing. Um, you can share information, ideas. You can plan events such as bar crawls or slot, slot holes or meetups or parties. Um, this one comes from the Allure of the Seas. So this person says, I just got off of Allure. It was wonderful being back on a ship. The first thing that I would suggest is to not cancel your cruise out of fear. We were told when we got on board there were 2,200 guests and 700 crew. Over that over that cruise, 1.9% had COVID and were in quarantine. We had to wear masks everywhere, including the gym. Correction, didn't have to wear masks outside unless you uh, couldn't socially distance. Many still wore masks outside. We were to dock last Sunday in Nassau, but due to rough seas, couldn't do so. St. Thomas and St. Kitts would not allow the ship to dock because of COVID, which wasn't a surprise. We went to Coco Key, but the waves were going over the walkway all morning, and it was windy. They waited until 1 p.m. to decide if we were staying or going. We ended up leaving for safety reasons. So our last stop and only stop was in Nassau. Beautiful day. People got out. We got to take excursions. The service on the ship was great. The food was delicious. I know... It was a disappointment for some on their first time cruise. I would have liked to go to Coco Key, but it is what it is. I can't blame Royal Caribbean for the weather. We were just so happy to be on a ship, and it was so wonderful for us. Shout out to this person, because what an incredible attitude about their vacation. You know, this is a vacation that had multiple stops that got canceled. They ended up only being able to basically get off the ship once. Um, and they still made the best of it. They enjoyed the food. They enjoyed the service. Um, this is the type of attitude that we need to have if we're cruising right now. Again, I know people cruise for the ports. I completely understand that. Jared and I take cruises for ports as well. However, this is just, a, I just love this attitude of, you know, we went to cruise because we wanted to be on a ship and that was the experience that we got. And it was amazing. Um, all right, I've got one more here to share with you today. I'm going to just pull it up. Give me a second. Give me a second. And this comes from our friend Heather. Oh, boy, this is interesting. Somebody posted an Instagram post in a roll call page. <laughs> I just, there's going to be a lot of thoughts and comments on this. So basically, they have found out that their, their cruise on Freedom of the Seas is partially chartered out. Now, we talked about a charter cruise last week. What is a charter cruise? A charter cruise is when a group pays for a portion of cabins or maybe the entire ship to be filled up with their people. Um, we talked about Atlantis events. Um, they're doing, uh, you know, they do LGBTQ cruises. They've got their cruise going on right now. We've talked about blues cruises, music cruises, beach boy cruises, um, lots of different types of charter cruises. But Heather just found out that this cruise that they're going on on Freedom of the Seas has been partially chartered by College Party Cruise. <laughs> College Party Cruise is, um, is your move for cruising during spring break. Join the largest group of spring breakers at sea on our sixth annual spring break cruise. Accommodations on this luxury, a luxurious cruise ship, unlimited food, all parties, exotic destinations, dazzling entertainment, fun-filled activities, and more are included. Get ready for an epic spring break. We will be sailing from Miami to Nassau and Coco Key, Bahamas, aboard Royal Caribbean's Freedom of the Seas. Fresh off a $116 million renovation in 2020, this ship offers it all. It is the biggest and most action-packed ship that College Party Spring Break has ever sailed on. We cannot wait for you to experience this mega ship for spring break. This transformed ship unveils new... Okay, it goes on and on and on, but... What would you feel like if you found out that your cruise ship that you were going on was going to be partially charted out by a spring break group? I would be terrified. I wouldn't be terrified. But um, if you were going away for, a, for like a vacation with your family, I can only imagine, you know, as a concerned parent, 
being worried about what your child may see or by what's going to be happening in the pool next to you, or I, I don't even know. There's just a million thoughts that run through my head. Feel free to share in the comments. Comment below what you think um, about this scenario. Uh, oh my gosh. Heather, thank you so much for sending that into us. And I am so sorry that you're going to have that experience on your cruise. Maybe this group like maybe they they reserve portions of the ship. Like maybe they take one of the pools, for example. There's multiple pools on Freedom of the Seas. Maybe they block off one of the pools and one of the pools is just for them. You know, maybe they're going to have their parties and their events separate from you and in a different place. That is what I hope. I'm sending those good vibes your way. We'll have to see what happens. Okay, it is now time for the portion of the show that we call, Oh, Ship, That's Cheap. And this week, we are talking about... Alaska. It is the perfect time to book an Alaska cruise. If you have never sailed on Alaska, please come and talk to me. Um, hit me up with my TA link below my email. Um, I would love to hear from you. It's Jordan at lovelandandsea.com. Alaska is one of the most unique and amazing cruises that you can ever take. It is going to give you an incredible experience all while staying still in the United States. And I can say it was a game changer for Jared and I. Jared and I have thought, you know, like, oh, Alaska is probably just for people that are a lot older, probably for people that are retired, people that enjoy nature and, you know, nice scenery. No, Alaska is epic. It is like no other cruise that you can take. It is totally different from a Caribbean cruise. You want to be waking up at 6 a.m. to be seeing the mountains and the views. I mean, we we want to go back to Alaska. It's not on our schedule right now, but that could change at any point in time. So this week, we are talking about Royal Caribbean's Serenade of the Seas. Now, I do want to preface this. This is a little bit more pricey than other cruises I've talked about from week to week. However, Alaska cruises are normally very expensive. It is difficult to find an Alaska cruise for two for under $3,000. I'm going to repeat that. It is difficult to find an Alaska cruise for two for under $3,000, especially a balcony cabin. And if you go to Alaska, you need to stay in a balcony cabin. Do not get an inside room. A balcony cabin is needed because you can wake up, have your cup of coffee on your balcony while you watch the mountains go past. Um, it's unbelievable. So we're talking about Serenade of the Seas. Seven nights on Serenade of the Serenade of the Seas out of Vancouver round trip goes to Icy Strait Point, Juneau, Haines, Alaska, and Tracy Arm Fjord for two in a guaranteed balcony, which means the cruise ship picks out your room. $1,709. $1,709 for two people. It's an unbelievable price. Um, I, if you have not been to Alaska, this is the best price I have seen on an Alaska cruise. If you're interested in booking this, it is for next September, September 11th, 2022. I'm going to grab it, grab a Kleenex very quickly. I will be right back. Excuse me. I'm not sick. I think it's allergies. Um, okay. So again, Serenade of the Seas, September 11th, 2022 out of Vancouver, guaranteed balcony for $1,709. Phenomenal deal. If you've not been to Alaska and you're looking for a good price, this is the best price I have seen. Email me in the link below. I'd be more than happy to set you up with this trip. Um, go to Alaska. It will change your life. It will change everything you think about cruising. And it will be such a different cruise from what you've taken in the past. But I promise you, it will be worth it. I promise you. Okay, it is now time to get to some questions and answers. I have got some uh, some things coming in hot from my producer here. Um, he says, Morgoth of Krim um, sent a $5 super chat. Thank you so much for that. Good morning. Let me buy you a coffee. Loving the show. Morgoth of Krim, thank you so much. Cheers to you. We really appreciate that. Amy M also sending in a $2 super sticker. Thank you so much, Amy M. We appreciate that. Oh, my goodness. And we have Cynthia sending in a $50 super chat. Loving the morning show. Here's something for you to make up your anniversary. Hope you're feeling better. Thank you so much, Cynthia. Cheers to you. We have not had an anniversary makeup quite yet. Um, we're hopefully going to be doing that the first week of February. We'll talk a little bit more about that probably next week. Um, but we really appreciate that. Thank you so much for those super uh, super chats and super stickers. Um, Lucy's mom has a question here. How do you do JJ Cruise, the pair of you? Has Jared gotten better from Corona? It's nearly tea time in the UK, so I'm sipping with tea and biscuits. Also, hi to my YouTube friend, Lou Mello. Thank you so much, Lucy, for writing in. Um, so how do we do JJ Cruise? So 
here's the thing. Jared has another job and JJ Cruz is basically my full-time job. So, you know, you may see me a lot more than him on the channel just because he is off, you know, he, you know, he is doing his day job. He has like a nine to five day job that he's doing. So while he's working, I'm typically the one that's you see making content, editing. Um, but then of course, when Jared's off work, he joins me on camera. That's why, at, uh, you know, on cruise ships, you see us on live late at night because that's after Jared's done working um, and we're able to be on the channel together. So we're both definitely a part of JJ Cruz, but Jared does have his other job to help support us and help support me and this channel, um, which we are so grateful for. Here's another question from C King. Where have I been, uh, Jordan? You're a TA. Definitely have the grandma hat on. <laughs> so what is the best first time cruise for an age ages three to 36 years in June? Yes. Um, seeking. I am a TA. I recently became a TA. I'm absolutely loving it. Um, the JJ crew has got, has kept me very, very busy, which I really appreciate. Excuse me. Um, but the best first cruise line for ages three to 36, listen, I'm going to have to say I would recommend Royal Caribbean. Um, Royal Caribbean has so much to offer. They have such a variety of different shows. They have a lot of different dining venues, a lot of different restaurants. There is something for everyone, especially on the larger ships. If you can go on something like the, I would say the Voyager class, the Freedom class, the Oasis class, you know, those ships have so much to do. And if you're looking for the ages of three to 36, they have everything from incredible kids programs all the way to stuff for the adults. Um, that would be my recommendation for you. Beachy Mama has a question. Any idea when Grand Cayman will reopen? So Grand Cayman currently has cruise ships that are supposed to stop there in February. Uh, we I, we've not heard any news from this. I actually follow the Cayman Times. Um, they're a news outlet that I follow just because I'm always looking for new cruise news and for more information. Um, I've been watching that newspaper outlet to see what they were going to say about February. They've not come out and said anything yet. We could see ships return as early as February, especially if Omicron goes down. That island was pretty much ravished with COVID. Um, their COVID numbers were unbelievably high, and that was you know why they didn't have ships coming. So hopefully soon. Uh, last question from Jane here. Have you heard of anything on the delay of Wonder of the Seas? Jane, let's talk about this. There's a lot of rumors that are going around about Wonder of the Seas being delayed. We have heard nothing. I have no facts to share other than I have heard rumors on this. Um, so I don't know. I think we will have more to talk about next week. But I, have, I don't have any facts to share. We're supposed to be on the inaugural on March 4th. If it's going to be delayed, obviously, we will not be on that ship anymore. Stay tuned, and we'll have to find out. Okay, that is the show for today. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you to everyone that sent in those super chats and super stickers. We love you for it. We appreciate everyone who joins the Wake Talk Show. We will be back next Wednesday at 10 a.m. Same time, same place. Lots of new news, lots of new information. We cannot wait for you to join us next week. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. Until next time, ciao for now.